think um, when you look at uh, this year and and the huge uh, challenges that companies have been facing, have been facing, you also had a huge injection of liquidity. That's meant that balance sheets have not been um, uh, hurt as much. So uh, you do have the backdrop of low interest rates. You've got um, uh, some cash obviously being put to use. Uh, and what you need is a little bit of confidence. Uh, what we tend to see is when we look at uh, previous mar stock market recoveries, and we've had global stock market up 40% uh, since the beginning of this year, uh, usually six months later than that, there's a lag and you tend to find many activity picking up. Now, as you've said, activity has picked up in the US. We've got uh, about 350 billions of deals uh, in Q3 alone, but um, uh, Europe has lagged. So what we believe is there's a contrast there and probably Europe uh, is just basically lagging, but will happen. So yes, we believe more m in Europe. Liz, I'm wondering about the, the firepower of some of these companies because it does jump out to me what happened with LVMH. I mean, very strong company, one of the real darlings of the stock market, embarks upon this deal to buy Tiffany's and then suddenly it, it seems doesn't like the price tag and does everything to try and get out of that particular deal. What does it tell us about the appetite for, for European companies to go after American ones at this point? Um, I think there is a valuation gap, obviously, and uh, what we look at really uh, uh, in our latest uh, uh, reports and work is we look at that valuation gap and actually European companies on average, 20, you know, they trade at about 15 times um, 2021 P, uh, whereas the US counterparts are around 21. So you do have that valuation gap and the US ones trade higher than the European ones. That That's the fact. So what we looked at w w was, you know, more activity coming from Europe from that perspective. Now, in terms of... Uh, various sectors and the motivation for consolidation, that what, that's what we look at. And I think you need to really distinguish between the motivations. Uh, and they're completely uh, uh, completely opposite in some cases. So you have the hugely defensive uh, motivations for some sectors, and that's going to be the challenge sectors by the COVID-19 crisis, accelerated trends that we've seen before. Um, and then you have the gross, uh, obviously, uh, motivated forces. For example, that's going to be for food delivery and, uh, and, and such sectors which have seen an acceleration of sales um, post-COVID-19. Uh, and then finally, uh, you tend to have as well uh, some sectors where the activity will anyway remain muted. I will take the example of pharma there, where actually we see the emergence of national champions. And obviously, it's a hugely strategic sector at the moment uh, where nations want to keep their champions and certainly won't let much happen in our view. So we expect bolt on, on that. So those three cases are very different.